This week, I'm very happy to welcome on a Ranger for two seasons, even though it felt like way longer. Um, he had a lot of success with the Rangers, but you might remember him for all those breakaway goals. Welcome to the show, number 40, Michael Grabner. What's going on, Grabs? What's going on, man? Not much. Same old here for me, so nice to talk some hockey again. I hope you don't mind, but it's not every episode I have a 25-goal scorer on here, so I got to crack open a beer so I could say I had a beer with Michael Grabner. All right, it's all right. Go enjoy and I would love to welcome you to have one. I know you said you don't do that stuff really anymore, but, uh, you know, if you want to grab one, you're more than welcome. Yeah, sounds good. No, I'm good for now. There's <laughs> a lot of stuff left to do with the kids today, so. Yeah, I was going to say, I know you uh, just dropped the kids off in martial arts. You're a full-time dad right now. How's that been, being with the family and the kids? And you're still in Arizona, right? Yeah, we're in Arizona. Um, yeah, it's been good. I've enjoyed being around more, um, being able to go to – school events hockey games i'm coaching or helping coach my son's team like just on the ice and been traveling quite a bit we're in nashville and chicago and stuff so mm -hmm. yeah it's just been it's been new you know what i mean like i didn't get to do most of these things like during my career so it's nice to be around the family and the kids a little more now are you still training at all because i know the olympics are coming up will you be making an appearance for austria <laughs> Uh, I don't even know if we're qualified. I doubt it that I'm oh, going really? appearing anywhere. So I'm training just for fun, though. I always enjoy working out. So it's just part of my routine, I guess. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, but for hockey as of now, it's not looking much like <laughs> anytime soon. So I'm sure you could hop in, though, and, and kind of feel right at home. I mean, you know, I'm, are you still playing men's league down there? Are there any like former pros down there that you connect with? There are, but I, like I said, I'm on the ice like probably four times a week with the kids now and like just training at home and doing martial arts, doing school mm -hmm. drop-offs and like they get out of school at like three and then it's right to martial arts, right to hockey and then it's like eight o'clock at night. So, and I'm not someone that wants to go play hockey at like 10 at night till midnight yeah. or something, you know, mm -hmm. I know a lot of guys doing that, but that's too much for me. Well, I know away from the game a little bit, you've gotten into NFTs. We were kind of talking about that through a uh, Twitter DM. And I actually, I don't know much about NFTs. So what exactly are you doing in the space? I don't know. I just enjoy it. I'm, I don't <laughs> know. It's like, I'm still new to all this too, right? It's just fairly new for myself and like mm -hmm. the space generally, I guess. Like it's been around a while, but I don't know if most people really understand it. But again, I, the, I'm trying to learn as I go here. It's obviously a lot of technology involved and project behind nfts and um different things again like people always just see the pictures and stuff and yeah people spending lots of money on them but again there's a lot more to it that you it's probably could talk about six hours now right like mm -hmm. that what i learned and but i probably don't even understand all of it at this point so again i just enjoyed the pictures but i also enjoyed learning what are people doing behind the pictures the projects who are like what are their goals? It's almost for me, I compare them to almost like startup companies that are yeah. trying to raise capital through NFTs. And then a lot of them have like a roadmap, what they're trying to accomplish in real life. Like some mm -hmm. of them do donations, some of them doing, I don't know, various things, right? Like that's why you got to research what you're investing in. Um, obviously there's a lot of scams out there, a lot of <laughs> oh yeah, a lot of other stuff. So you got to be careful. Again, like I try to do my research on stuff, what I put my money at again. And I just really enjoyed and i've enjoyed learning something new that's i've had no clue about before so mm -hmm. is that something you think you picked up of because you know you're you're done playing hockey or is that something you would have done you know 10 years ago in the prime of your career probably no i don't know i don't know to be honest how i came along like i invested in crypto a few mm -hmm. like before i got into nfts and understanding like what crypto are what crypto is right like i've heard it a lot of times bitcoin in the past that it's like fake internet money a scam whatever yeah. you heard right in the news uh -huh. um so i tried to learn what is cryptocurrencies the technology behind it again the networks and how these things are run what the things you can do with them the possibilities in my head i kind of pieced it together on my own like right like you, if you understand something eventually you see where this all could go and that's what mm -hmm. happened and then i found nfts which is kind of for me the next step in crypto, right? They're all built on yeah. the blockchains and the crypto cryptos. Um, so yeah, again, it's it's still an early space. I think we're still early in all this, how it's all gonna develop and how it's gonna progress in the next months, years here. We'll see. But again, I see a lot of use cases, utility in the real world for mm -hmm. things like that. So again, we'll see how it goes. 
Yeah, no, it's something I definitely have to look into because everyone around me talks about it and I'm, I'm fighting it so hard to just like not get sucked in, but I'm sure eventually I'm just going to get sucked right in. <laughs> Personally, I think, yeah, you should look at it <laughs> again because like you just do, like people are using it for so many different things. Um, mm. uh, like, again, I don't even know how to start to explain. Like, you yeah. just got to kind of dive in, find people. Like, again, I found people on Twitter that seemed like what they knew they were talking about. Um, then I watched YouTube videos explaining it again. And then you got to kind of understand it yourself a little bit, right? Like, mm. it's, I mean, I'm not just putting money at random things right i try to yeah. understand it and a lot of people on twitter that are talking negative about it i just gotta laugh right because mm -hmm. it's kind of like the beginning of the internet people were making fun of the internet right oh it's gonna be here for a couple months and no one gonna care about it or social media right if you yeah. had the possibilities of understanding where all these things could go when they started out you would be you might have invented instagram or you might you yeah. know what i mean like, you don't know so Again, I think right now we're living in an age where we have so much information under our fingertips that you can learn all these things about various topics, whatever you're interested in, right? And I just feel like this is something that's still fairly new. People have been told it's a scam for a long time, for 10 years probably. Mm -hmm. And again, it's kind of, you got to get out of that mindset and kind of look at it with an open mind to see what it's all about if you do that i think you're gonna learn to understand what it is um what it may be, be used for in the future and what things you can do with it again mm -hmm. this is a technology behind these cryptocurrencies some of them are faster some of them are used for currencies some of them are used more for smart contracts whatever it is right so again i could talk probably for five hours <laughs> yes I don't even know if I uh -huh. have the full picture yet myself or the complete understanding, but again, mm -hmm. it makes sense to me. So that's why I like to encourage people to look into it. And some of them might come to a different conclusion, which I doubt, but yeah. again, it's everyone up to themselves to do their research. No. Yeah. You might have me convinced, honestly, I've definitely got to look into it, but um, you know, just speaking of ways of, of making some extra money, are you by any chance a sports better? I did a little bit <clears throat> during my career, like just on oh, football, really? mainly, uh -huh. mainly on football. I enjoyed football. I, like I said, this now with the kids, I don't really have much time to watch anything. Yeah. Really, even Sundays, like we were in Chicago at the tournament and flying back, all football Sundays gone. So I haven't really paid attention to many sports. Like I like for some highlights, maybe watch a hockey game that I have some buddies on here and mm -hmm. there. But other than that, it's been just family stuff. Well, I don't know betting, if you well, betting. I haven't really bet on anything lately. So even though it's becoming like huh. legal everywhere now, so. Well, I don't know if you know this about yourself, but you're kind of like a sports better's hero. Me? Yeah. Me. I mean, you know, I was into it a little bit like four or five, six years ago. I started betting, but whenever Michael Grabner's on the ice and there's a one goal lead, you can count on Grabner to cover that puck line, the minus one and a half with that empty netter. <laughs> yeah i know i <laughs> you know, people always make fun of about empty netters but i think it's the coaches know who they put out there right like for me it was always not as much about the goals of course they counted the stats right uh -huh. the stat sheet doesn't have pictures but it's just <laughs> to, like close out the game right like i don't yeah. want to leave it up to chance like it's like people think oh you're trying hard for getting that extra goal but it's to lock out close mm -hmm. out the game right like a pitch or something it's two goals a minute and ten it's going to be tougher than if you just like chip the puck out and they come yeah. down and score so a lot of times people kind of make fun of people that score empty net goals mm -hmm. for me it's like number one a skill like you because you, you can't just cheat you gotta like pick your times to go or make reads right there's one more, more guy out there and then, like I said, you just got to put away the game. It's kind of gives yeah. the team a little bit of a cushion to just kind of relax, you know? And most importantly, you cover the spread. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I know. It's, uh, we had uh, in the ranges, we had a guy in the elevator that brought us up and down who would always bet the overs. And he like <laughs> put a lot of goals. So he, he liked my empty netters too. Yeah. I was going to say, I bet that one game, uh, what was it? I think you guys were playing like Carolina where you had, I think, two, <laughs> two, two, two empty netters. Yeah. So yeah, it's, I mean, I'll take it, man. Like, again, I'm not looking back and seeing how many empty netters I had. The goals, the standards, the number alone, and that's what it is. Again, people <laughs> yeah. look at certain things, right? They're always trying to pick up on things and make fun of people or you know, kind of bring down their accomplishments, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So I, I just got to laugh. Like I said, I played in the league a long time, and 
there's different ways of doing things on the ice, different reasons coaches put you out there in different situations. So I was just one of them that gets put out at the end of the game. Yeah, plus the elevator guy might have given you a little tip there at the end of the night or something. Oh, yeah, he was a beauty. I was a real nice guy. So I he, he worked there the whole time I played there. So I was, mm -hmm. he loved betting the overs. That's awesome. I, I kind of love it as a, as a fan. Like, you know, I have some friends in the league and I'll send them a Snapchat. Like, you know, I got the boys tonight, like take care of the internet for me, you know, something like that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's always good fun, but you know, you also have some, have scored some really cool goals, really big goals in your career too, not just empty netters, but I want to ask you about scoring in the winter classic playing against the Sabres, I think at city field, like, you know, that's obviously something that people dream of. So how awesome is that? Yeah, I was part of a couple outdoor games against, uh, obviously, with the Islanders against the Rangers. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, Jersey. No, Jersey we played, I think. Yeah, and uh, Yankee Stadium, right? Yankee against Stadium Rangers? at the Stadium yeah. Series. Yeah, sorry. Um, that was the first one. And then, obviously, that Winter Classic is the big one, right? So, um, there's a lot of fun playing uh, and scoring out there. It's just like you get back to being a kid again, remembering mm -hmm. to skating outside of my, my dad in Austria on the bonds and lakes. Back then it was like cold and there's those froze in the winter. So it just gives you a different feeling. And like you said, it's a memory goal. You will probably always remember just because it sticks out of the whole experience of the whole day, the whole couple of days, probably before with practices and stuff. So yeah, it's, it was a fun, fun time. And um, uh, yeah, just to, to be able to play in those, right. A lot of, a lot of guys are want, want to play in winter classics. And mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to play in two outdoor games, which was pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And and speaking of Austria, especially, I know there's not like a a huge amount of guys that make it to the NHL from Austria. I know Vanek is one, and I think Niederreiter is. Oh no, he's Swiss, right? Uh, Niederreiter. Raffle is the other guy. Raffle. Raffle. Yeah, yeah. Dallas. Really? So he, Dallas yeah. Town? We actually grew up on this basically the same street of a town of sixty thousand people. Wow. So it's kind of weird that two of us from a non-hockey country if you want made it all the way in the nhl and played here for a while so it doesn't happen too often i think so we've been i grew up with him my whole life playing with him so yeah that's really cool and i wanted to ask you i guess you know growing up in austria who'd you idolize growing up like what player well i obviously gretzky yari curry like guys like that you saw or heard about written in newspapers and like Back then, like I keep telling the same story, the internet wasn't really as, mm -hmm. wasn't there yet, right? So it just yeah. started coming in my teens. So you just saw certain guys playing in like the world championships or Olympics, which were bro broadcasted on TV that you would watch. So I didn't really know too many guys aside from the stars. And then like obviously collecting Panini cards back in the day, uh -huh. that's where you learn like names and stuff. But yeah. from the standpoint of like watching players play and stuff. It was just like the stars that you at the time, Yager, let me, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. um, and then obviously some local guys, like local, like Canadian Americans coming to the Austrian league who played yeah. in my hometown. Um, that kind of changed a little bit too over the years where guys back then would play five, six, seven years in my hometown. Now it's like a year or two, they have a good year and they move on to like Sweden or like a different higher paying league it's if you want mm. so back then it was just like ken strong like tom Searle. they were like canadian guys that kind of were either at the end of their career or just not quite making it to the nhl that go over and try it out in europe right so mm. there was more guys that back then we looked up to now people can just watch on the internet highlights and nhl all day so people follow probably the bigger leagues a little more yeah. Yeah, I actually, I want to throw one name out there. There's probably like a really small chance you know him, but it's a good friend of mine from juniors, Max Reisinger. He's from Austria. He's a little younger. Mm -mm. No. I don't know too many younger guys because like, so I didn't play for many national teams because it's always like was between seasons. Like I made the playoffs. They were in yeah. April. The next day I wouldn't make the playoffs, but we were in a B pool. So that tournaments in like April or something. So it kind of is like the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't really know too many young kids. Like I know... Rossi, the guy that just got drafted in the first round, I heard about him, but I don't know yeah. him personally, right? So, like, and I haven't been home really except in the summers for like a few weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I just thought I'd throw that out there just in case. I don't know, he's a good friend of mine, but I know his Austrians are pretty tight. Um, oh, yeah, I want... I mean, it's pretty small, like, I, I probably heard the name, like, but again, like, I just don't know him, right? Like, mm -hmm. like I said, usually when you play in Austria around there or even 
be younger, you get to know each other in like national teams. Like that's how I know all these guys that I grew up playing with, Rafa, mm -hmm. but even other guys from like Vienna that's five hours away. Yeah. We had all these tournaments that and then training camps of netic because we didn't have that big of a selection right so it was kind of the same 87s 88 birth years together for 10 12 years till mm -hmm. you know, we split up yeah no i, I feel that i want to go into uh you're you're one of the few people who's played for the islanders rangers and devils so you got like all three of this tri-state area um, I kind of want you, if you can talk about like each experience, and I'm sure they were completely different, unique experience, especially, you know, playing for the Rangers in the city, but, um, you know, your time with the Islanders is obviously kind of where your NHL career took off. Um, and then, you know, going to the Rangers and going to the Devils. Yeah, obviously, like you said, my career started with the Islanders. Really, I was in Vancouver for a few games and got traded and then picked up at the Islanders. So that's kind of where you, where I got my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. Um, we we're a pretty young team. So not really too many expectations, but which was nice as a young guy coming in just to play, right. And not having really to worry about like being sad or whatever, just kind of grow as a team, like Oki, Okposo, Tavares, Nielsen, like we were all so young at the time. And it was like a good, good experience, obviously going in and expectations started growing as the years went on. And uh, yeah, that's uh I love playing at the Coliseum. The fans are unreal. Like they're some one of our best fans for in the league, hardcore mm -hmm. fans at Islanders. Um, and we are very loyal, obviously. So um, I still follow them. I still talk to some of the guys working there and stuff. So again, it's just like something you always have a connection to, right? So is that um, where your loyal your loyalty is the Islanders, you think? No, like I have like I like all the teams. I got lucky, man. Like I played with the Islanders, Rangers, to Maple Leafs. Like I played for some great organizations, mm. right? Like, of course, you, once the pucks drop, whatever side you're on, that's who you're playing for, right? But looking back now, all my experiences, all my teams I played for, I enjoy playing for. I made great memories. I met uh, great people along the way, right? So I don't look back at any of the teams or anything with anything else besides like, like good memories, yeah. right? Like even yeah, yeah. Coyotes here. So forever, wherever I was in my career and in my private life, it worked out. So like kind of get settled in with the Islanders and with the Rangers, right? The big city. Mm -hmm. And then like and now with kid, like kids getting older, so on, I will cover their life. So yeah, it, it's been good. Like the Rangers, like I said, everyone dreams of playing at Madison Square Garden. And I enjoy playing there as a road team and then as a home team. Um, I was actually... a supposed to probably get drafted by the Rangers oh, really? like back in my draft year yeah like I didn't tell the story too often but uh -huh. I was kind of waiting for the Rangers to be up to be because they kind of expressed interest you know you have all these interviews in your draft year mm -hmm. with all the teams I mean so I didn't they, get them but <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're trying to get them up. um and I did with Vancouver too but I wasn't really not that I didn't have that feeling. I just didn't expect it. They were, yeah. they were pretty high at 14th overall. And I think Rangers were 21st or something. So I kind of was waiting and kind of came out a surprise. Like, not that big of a surprise, but the Rangers kind of told me, hey, if you're still around, we'll take you. So I was kind of waiting. Mm -hmm. Who did they take before. instead of you? Bobby Sanguinetti. Oh, really? I remember him, the yeah. D-man? Yeah, 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 I remember him. So, uh -huh. Yeah, so like I, when I was with the Rangers, when I scouts, I think, or the player forget um he mentioned it to me that uh -huh. he remembers like talking back in the day when the draft and like uh, in the interviews and so it was it was just a funny coincidence how it all works out right like how you end up at the team down the road and again i i was lucky in my career i played some for some great organizations been treated well everywhere i went so um yeah it was a, a awesome career yeah. And back to those two years with the Rangers, I mean, you had 27 goals one year, 25 goals the next year. Like, you know, those were some pretty big numbers in your career. I know you had a, a, another really strong year with the Islanders. I think you had like 34, 35 of the Islanders that one year. But, uh, you know, what do you attribute that success with the Rangers to? You know, just good line mates, good timing? Yeah, probably a mix of both. Like, um, I always considered myself a goal scorer. Just my roles kind of got changed as I got older. Like, I mm. went from like a power play guy. I think my first seven points I had in the first 10 games with Vancouver, six of them are power play points. So people don't even understand that I was kind of yeah. like a power play guy and I kind of <laughs> turned into a penalty killer, right? Uh -huh. But for me, it was just like I 
did what I was told. And um, I think that's why I stuck around that long, right? Because if you couldn't adapt, you probably would be out of the league. Yeah. There's only so many power play spots. There's only so many spots that people are fighting for. So either you do what you're told or you're going to be gone. So mm -hmm. a lot of young guys need to realize that where they're kind of like, oh, but I've been a goal scorer, like power play guy in juniors all my life. But yeah, now in the NHL, they're telling you to play third line wing, go play third line wing. <laughs> yeah. Is uh, you want to stick around or you don't. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think why I signed with the Rangers too, not just because the Rangers is was the coaches I have gotten known at LA Mignot from the Vancouver, my Vancouver times and Scott O'Neill was my coach in the AHL for a few years. So mm -hmm. I, he reached out when I was free agent and we, I talked to him and um, I think that was the best fit for me personally going there, having two coaches that know my style of game know what um was like what positions to put me at to succeed right so um that's probably why i had more success than going to a random team that no one knows you really yeah so and that's also like i said why i chose the range a big part why i chose the rangers mm -hmm. and let's talk about the the rangers away from the rank a little bit you're in new york city i know you're pretty you're pretty fucking jacked you know anyone who's seen a picture of you you're very strong but i know you don't like have a strict diet right so like what are the, you know, some of the favorite restaurants you had in New York City, Long Island, well, around I, this area? I didn't live in, the, I, I always chose like the suburbs, really. So I was oh, really? out in my, I had already kids and stuff in school. So, mm -hmm. um, still a great so, area. Yeah, it was great. It's great food everywhere around, really, right? New York. So, uh, but kids, guys with kids usually lived out there for school. So it was like Stepan, Girardi, myself, Klein. And we were all out in, in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, my metabolism always been good. So like I could eat two pounds of pasta every day and probably don't gain weight. Like it That's doesn't crazy. matter. I eat chocolate cake every Every hotel we go to, I eat the chocolate cake. I probably know all the chocolate cakes in every single hotel I've ever stayed at, like desserts uh -huh. and stuff. So I just got blessed with a good metabolism. And um, But now that I haven't been playing as much, obviously you don't burn as many calories. So I kind of slow down a little bit and try to kind of manage my diet a little better. And um, yeah, but again, I like you said, there's great food everywhere in New York. And um, we were like, whatever, 25, 30 minute train right away to go to downtown and have dinner. So we did that a few times mm -hmm. along the way. So going to games, were you taking the train, like the public train to games or are you driving? Um, mixed. So like someday, depending on our morning skate or not morning skate or what time the games are, sometimes we took the train, like every guy that was out there, mm -hmm. like, like 6.30 in the morning. So like, that yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but we were in a public train. Like, yeah. we had a good stop, though, because the train wasn't as full yet because, like, two stops later, or even one stop later, like, it was packed, right? Like, mm -hmm. so, yeah, it was – that was the only kind of shitty thing, if you want, like, <laughs> because once we were in there, we stayed at the hotel for pregame naps. So, oh, really? like, right, like, yeah. So, we just stayed at the in the city. We wouldn't go back and forth. Sometimes we would have our pregame skate out – in the practice facility and mm -hmm. then drive in after that and like go straight to the hotel park at Madison Square Garden and walk over, have a pregame meal at the practice rink, sleep for a couple hours and then go to the rink and uh, drive home after the game. So we did a few different things depending on the schedule. That's so interesting that you were staying at a hotel on game day, like for home games, like that's so uncommon in the NHL. Well, but it, like I said, like guys that lived yeah. in the city didn't. Like yeah. just guys out in the suburbs. If you like Souk and those guys, they had an apartment five minutes away. Mm -hmm. They went just home. But the guys that came from Rye, it's no point of taking yeah. a train or drive back out there. It might take you two hours, right? So like, so they gave us the option to stay in the hotel. Or just take, it's only a couple hours, right? You get in, check in at like whatever, 12, one between, and then you head over at four. So mm -hmm. good for the points too. I don't no, know. No, get... Yeah. So I mean, well, points are for the team because they were paying for. I think. Or, I, don't know, I don't know what happened actually. So who knows? But yeah. Yeah. They teams, don't give you the personal points. That's kind of oh, fucked no, up. I, yeah, the teams probably get that. You know, keep that stuff. Yeah. But no, again, like, the Rangers, there's nothing you whatever you need, they give you. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd I'd love to just be a New York Ranger for one day to see like all the cool shit you get. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's just like overall, right? You treat it like royalty, like it said, anything you need, like they try to go out of their way to just 
heavy war about hockey and that's it nothing else food whatever it is food mm -hmm. transportation like nothing you have to worry about just be like hey i need this okay done like yeah that's pretty sweet and i know you uh you got to play with henrik lundquist a little bit are you gonna be at his retirement ceremony or are you gonna fly in for that i don't know we'll see what, what's going on with like i said like i'm so busy with the kids i don't know mm -hmm. when that is we'll see i really enjoy playing with him and i'm getting to know him obviously playing against him for a while there and then seeing how he acts like off the ice and in practices and stuff, how a competitor is. So it was cool to see both of the, both sides, right? Like playing against him and then with him. So, um, yeah, he had a scary thing happening to him. I talked to him at the time. So glad mm -hmm. it all worked out and he's back on his feet. And, um, yeah, no, I think he's on the commentary or something yeah, yeah. I see him all the time right yeah. trying to make the other guys look bad <laughs> yep. sitting between them yeah so yeah he's a good guy so it's nice to see him get the respect that he deserves yeah yeah for sure and, and one last thing before i let you go who is your favorite teammate i guess throughout your entire career do you i mean i know it's impossible it's such a hard know, question to ask the same question is like hey what's your favorite moment i'm like i played 11 years for a 19 yeah. team like what do you want me to pick a one right like it's well like, i didn't ask that question i know that I one's know, harder I'm just saying, same <laughs> as teammates, though. i don't know how many teammates i play with i like i i yeah. got along with a lot of them i thought mm -hmm. a lot of them stick out hey Suk, um oki franzi like there's so many like that i just put pop in my head that yeah i got along with at the time wherever I played. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I mean, I, that's what I will probably remember the most too, is like meeting the certain people and, and like the, the friendships that you build. Right. Yeah. Even though yeah. you can't keep up with them all, that's the only thing, right. You, you're done or you move teams and you, I played, I don't know, 500 guys. It's kind of like you would yeah. be a full-time job just to like checking in on everyone. So you kind of just run into each other down the road and like talk mm -hmm. and check in once in a while. So. Well, yeah, I know you were big on the, from what I heard, the card table on the plane. So I feel like maybe you had a, you know, a couple of good buddies from those games in those yeah, days. Yeah, well, I like JT Miller. Like he was always sensitive in the card game when he lost and stuff, right? So like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it's just like stuff like this, right? That's probably one of the bigger things that you miss too, is just like being around the guys and like mm -hmm. card games or in the locker room and stuff, right? It's, it's not just the hockey. Obviously that's big part too, like going out there and playing and competing and stuff. And, but when you get away, it's like, man, what do I do now with my, all my free yeah. time? I used to have everything scheduled for me. I used to like be hanging out with the guys, just joking around. It's kind of like your free time, right? Like it's kind of the adjustment to get away from that life and kind of mm -hmm. settle into like a normal life. So you just got to teach your kids how to play blackjack and you'll be good. <laughs> yeah, blackjack. Yeah, that's, I, we used to play like seven up, seven down. For mm -hmm. the beginning of my career, is all poker. Poker is kind of boring, though. If you don't get hands, yeah. like if you have a three-hour flight, you play four hands. Like <laughs> the tight player like Tavares, right? You only play aces and stuff. So now uh -huh. I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> but like, yeah, that may be just like a boring. I would like the games that like guys are involved the whole time. It makes the flight go quicker, obviously. So. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything that you want to plug before I let you go? Like your NFT stuff, anything else you want to give a I shout know, out to? I don't care, man. I don't plug anything. So, I mean, people always assume like if NFTs or certain things that we get or I or people get stuff for free. I'm sure people do that where they're like, uh -huh. hey, can you just post this about this? And like, I've gotten lots of DMs. I can show you my DMs, but I don't have the time to like look through them all, come and if they're actual real projects or good projects or water people trying to sell people here right like mm. it's like i don't want to put some out there and have someone lose money everything that i post and invest in i invested my own money in and if i'm if i'm wrong somehow it's my own fault but i don't try to like shill anything or whatever this word that people use now any projects and stuff so like again like all everything i post i'm usually invested in myself with my money i didn't get anything for free yet 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 <laughs> yeah, i mean like, I said, like soon. I don't know, maybe like i said like people offering me stuff i just don't have the time to look yeah. at all these different projects to pick out like the ones maybe they're all good and they're just like startups and trying to get in it's a tough space to come in now like i've tried to help this one guys like with the nfts they we get to talk and they were actually hockey guys they played college hockey mm -hmm. and i went into the nfts but they have a tough time to getting this thing off the ground because so many, I feel like this every day there's 50 new NFTs minting and starting up, right? It's like, 
big thing is marketing, kind of building up a community and getting yeah. people behind it, right? To get your, your, like I said, it's basically for me, a startup company. Mm -hmm. So you go and trying to find investors. That's what people do. They market the product and you got to kind of have people buying in. If that doesn't yeah. happen, you're not going to get your NFT project off the ground. So yeah. Well, I, I mean, I totally appreciate you doing this. Like literally I've been a big fan of yours for a long time. So it's really cool to, to have you on here to shoot the shit. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I don't have much going on except I go pick <laughs> up the kids now. So like, I don't mind switching up my day once in a while with some hockey talk and just like talking random shit. So <laughs> thanks, Greg. I was like, well, maybe we'll do it again uh, down the road. Sounds good. Yeah. Maybe we'll have something to talk about. Maybe the Rangers will win the cup. Yeah, hopefully we'll see. And maybe yeah. the Coyotes will sign you. They could use you. Oh, yeah, that's going to be a tough one for them. They, I talked <laughs> to, talk to still some of the guys, so I haven't reached out in a while because <laughs> yeah. I'm part of a, teams like this. Like uh -huh. my first year, the Islanders, are, we had like a rough start. And it's, yeah, it's you not try to be positive again. Like no one in this league wants to lose, right? The fans always be like, why didn't you guys play better? I'm like, <laughs> we tried. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, if they think you want to lose or something, yeah. right? it's not that easy. So again, that's why I kind of leave them alone. They got their first win. Maybe they can string a few together here, but mm. I'm going to the game tonight, actually. Oh, you are? The first one, because my son is invited to a birthday party. They rented a suite. So <laughs> no one of his teammates. So I'm going to help if the kids kind of manage them. So we're going to go to a game. So we'll see how it goes. Sook's on minnesota right so it yeah. should be a good game hopefully at least i mean i think the wild are gonna smack them probably with caprice i, and Zook and I mean all those i actually like the wild they have a decent team now so they they should be like you said get smoked i mean you never know like, <laughs> hockey is a weird sport somehow yeah. like like i said we were beating teams my first year that we weren't supposed to beat and then they thought we we're gonna beat that team and we got smoked by someone that's kind of like bottom feeders like we were back then right mm -hmm. It's kind of weird. Hockey is however you feel in that moment and that time. Like, so that's why I think it's a great sport because you don't know what happens at any given time. Yeah, no, I mean, I've been, listen, the Rangers have been stealing games because it's just Sturkin. You know, they got dominated by the Panthers the other night and they were able to no, pull it out. That's what I mean. It just depends on the goalie, on like, how is the other team feeling? Like, I mean, like, we are all human beings, right? Yeah. Like, some days you go out and you're like, oh boy, my legs are yeah. fucking shot. <laughs> like, I mean, like, you're trying to play a position sound game. Hopefully, you catch the second win in the second, third period somehow. Because again, like, uh, sometimes you, your body is run down or you had a game, or hard, whatever it is, right? Travel. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, we're machines. We might look like them or some of them out there, but again, it's like you, some people wake up in the morning, like, oh, I don't want to go to work today. I yeah. feel like crap, right? Like, yeah, same thing. So we'll see what happens. We'll hope maybe it'll be a good game. It's funny when you put it in that perspective too, like as a New Yorker, I, like I wake up every day, 630 in the morning and I take the train to work in the city. So you were doing the same thing. Like, it's yeah. kind of crazy to think about. I had to play a hockey game at yeah. seven at night competing against some of the best athletes <laughs> in the world, right? So it's like... You go try to get some sleep, get some food, and then uh -huh. get your body ready. It's again, it's a, it's, it's not always just like the stuff that people see. That goes a lot of, in, a lot of things in the background that people don't see. That's, that's hard. You know what I mean? Like again, like obviously we get paid well, we get treated well, all these mm -hmm. things, and um, but that's why we put our bodies through the ringer, right? Yeah, you got to walk through Grand Central Station at 7 a.m. like the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, we're always grinding through there with a coffee in the hand and bumping yeah. into people, seeing rats, man. It's all the same. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. It is all, It really is all the same. But seriously, again, thank you so much. Like, you're an awesome dude, and I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me.